able to make some out of this um, one fold material. So I have measured my mattress, which is the first step. Now, the Logitech Price mattress is the one is pretty standard. It is 51 inches tall by 28 inches across with approximately four and a half inches in width. Now, remember that we have to calculate for overlapping into the back area of the mattress so it's nice and snug. So with those measurements that I have of my mattress, like I said, 51 by 28 by four and a half, I have made a simple template, which is this. Cut a rectangle of fabric, which is exactly four and, four and a half inches by 67 and a half inches. Just a rectangle like this. This measures exactly the 44 and a half by 67 and a half. And if I was to fill it over, you could see that it's it's a pretty well little size. Now, I have to make the ends so that they overlap like this. So I will need to cut out a square, which is eight and a half by eight and a half from each corner so that I am able to make the corners of this. Now how that's going to work is that I am going to take my fabric and I am going to cut out eight and a half by eight and a half inch squares. Okay? I'm going to cut them out of all four corners. So basically, okay. 8.5 by 8.5 inches. I'm going to cut them out of all four corners. Just a perfect square of 8.5 by 8.5. And what I will be left with is, and I sew the, sew the ends together, see, like a mattress. Now, in the end, based on the measurements, I will have a 50.5 length by 27 and a half width, height, and that is a little smaller than the original size of my mattress, but it's only because mine is made out of fleece and I need to accommodate for the fact that it's stretchiness. So in order to get it to fit snugly, I need to make it just a little bit smaller than the measurement of the mattress. So this is my goal. And obviously at the bottom I will put my elastic so it will be able to fold over into the mattress. So now that I have my rectangle cut out, which is 67 and a half inches by 44 and a half inches, I am going to go ahead right now and cut out those squares, which I said would be eight and a half by eight and a half inches. So there is my first.
Let's see. So now I'm getting ready to sew my ends. Now this is the 8x8 square that I had cut out. Um, this is the right side of my fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and just line it up like so. So right, right side is facing inwards and wrong side is in the outside. And I'm just going to sew straight along all four corners. Allowing a quarter. Hi, so I sewed all four corners like I said I would. And this is what it's looking like right now. It fits perfectly on the mattress. As you can see. Let me see if I lift it up. Nope. lift it up so you can see how it looks. So it's a pretty good fit. And the back area, you can see how it overlaps. And all we are going to do is add our elastic at the end. And I will be finished with my sheets. So the next step for me is figuring out how much elastic I need. And I found this in my stash of elastic. It's pretty thin. I want to say about a quarter inch and what I did was I clipped it with a safety pin and I wrapped it around pulling it all the way around the mattress and the final measurement at least for this mattress So now that I have done all of the work I'm going to just fold it over and do a half inch seam all around and I will thread my elastic uh, later on so right now I'm just gonna go all around the edge half an inch and just finish up the project so the edge I am sewing is exactly from the distance of the foot all around So once I sewed my half inch overlap all throughout, I put a safety pin attached to the elastic and I threaded it through all the way around and that takes a while but when it comes out, 
Make sure you leave an opening though. I forgot to mention that. Make sure you leave an opening for it to go in and for it to come out. So now that I've threaded it through, I can go ahead and stitch these two pieces of elastic together and close the small opening that I have. Now here's a tip. I have these cheap um, pins and they will open sometimes when I'm threading it through so I taped it close so that I wouldn't have that happen when I was threading it through. So now that I've gotten to the end I'm just going to cut that off and I'm going to sew both edges like so about an inch together. So I sewed it together and I went back and forth multiple times. I'm just going to pull all of my elastic through the sheath, just pulling just to spread it out evenly throughout. Go back to my opening and stitch it close. So I finished the sheets. I closed the opening. I have threaded all the elastic through and I just have to put it on the crib. So this is the old cover. Oops. And now putting it right side. You will see that the ends match perfectly right here and it overlaps. And you can see how it fits perfectly right here too. And since the fabric is stretchy, it's perfect nice and smooth. So I'm just going to place it in the crisp and